Previously on Launch Control. Subaru Rally Team USA embarked on a massive cross-continent, three-week, three-event mission. It all kicked off in Shelton, Washington, as David Higgins and Patrick Sandell took on stiff competition at the Olympus Rally. Higgins and Drew had an event they'd soon rather forget. A rare moment for the champ. Sandell found his rhythm at his first American rally. By rally's end, Sandell carried the flag for Subaru. First event I win for a Subaru Rally Team USA, so super stoked about that one. And a privateer climbed to the top of the ARA Championship leaderboard. With limited time and a long journey to their next event, the team reunites in England for the first America's Rallycross event. This time, it's Higgins' turn to be the guest driver in the Rallycross program. Now the team is on the line and ready to find out where they stand against fresh talent and some familiar faces. This is Launch Control. To the casual observer, Everything looks like business as usual. Three Subaru Rallycross cars, wrapped and ready for the start of another race season. But it's all new. We're here, Silverstone, first round, and we've got a new car for this year. The newly formed America's Rallycross Championship takes center stage for the first time. You know, we've always been saying, we're building towards something, this is that something. Subaru Rally Team USA has put everything it's learned on the line to make a run for the title. We've taken like last year's car and the, the years before and tried to merge as many of the good bits of all of them again. We've created, I think, a really nice, tidy Rallycross car this year. These cars are as good as we could possibly make them. The great question is, where do we stand compared to World Rallycross and European Rallycross? We've never really known. Our team, all the other teams, everybody is very curious, like, where, where is that going to be? So we're expecting a lot. You know, we're going there with um, three top cars and three top drivers. The inaugural season is an abbreviated four-event championship, so every race counts. With so much riding on their success and three all-new cars that have never been raced, well, hello and welcome to sunny Silverstone for America's Rallycross. Three drivers eager to show their pace. <laughs> First up, it's great to see you racing at home. Uh, how does it feel? Great, you know, just a lot of I get to um, compete for my home um, fans and friends and family and things. Great atmosphere, so happy to be part of it. An entire team pouring their heart into the effort. They're confident to be in the thick of the action and on pace. The new FIA-style points-based system rewards overall speed rather than finishing positions. In Q1, Atkinson gets the jump into second in the race. Clear behind, clear behind. Third overall. On your warm-up start, don't go on the right line, it's wet, it's them. Next race. Sandell drops a great launch. But as both drivers hold firm their line into turn one, contact results in a puncture for Sandell. Are we having a flat or something? Left tire, left front. As the tire delaminates, it shreds the body, and he's forced to retire. Coming up to the first corner, he had a little bit of a gap on me, you know, so he just turned into me. And I tried to keep holding my position, but he just turned into me more and more and more, and, and then causing this uh, this puncture. So very unfortunate. We know we have the speed, so uh, there's three more qualifications. We just need to make them perfect, and then we should be right up there again. In Q2, the yellow Subaru finds redemption. He's in hot pursuit of the leader, who suffers misfortune as his hood pops up. 
That's the opportunity Patrick needs, and he jumps to the race lead. Third overall. Higgins and Atkinson run third and fourth in their race, slotting in right behind their teammate in overall times. By Q3, the Subarus have established themselves as a threat, but the competition is fierce. Atkinson holds the inside line, but runs out of space. Despite the roll, he lands on his wheels and finishes the heat to earn crucial points. So the, the format and the, the racing is, is a bit different than what we, we had. It's kind of like the heat races used to be, but it's still time-based, not position-based. So the idea is to run as fast as you possibly can. By morning, the cars are refreshed and the fans have turned out in droves. The last round of the four qualifying sessions is set to begin. With the Subarus in the thick of the points battle, the pressure is on. Once again, Higgins and Atkinson find themselves in the same heat. Their team strategy works, with Atko taking the Joker early and crossing the line just ahead of his teammate for a 1-2 finish. Now it's up to Sandell. He only manages a fourth in the race, but with fewer on-track battles and clear track, his time lands him ahead of his teammates, fourth overall. Qualifying complete, Subaru finds itself in a strong position. Obviously some bad dreams last night about yesterday's finish, um, so I was pretty motivated this morning to come out fighting. We're all on the second row for the semis. Um, important to get at least two, if not three of the cars into the final. That's uh, the challenge now. Um, we know the guys in front on the front row are quick and it's going to be hard to beat them, so then we've got to, got to run some quick laps, find some clean air, and then um, hopefully it's enough to get to the final. While the team continues to make steady and constant setup changes to improve the pace, they look to do so from the middle of the pack. So I managed to get one place on to going into turn three, which was good. And then I could see the boys in front were battling quite hard, so I just tried to really bring myself right up to the back of them. And then when they started knocking each other about a bit, although it was a great position, it gives you good confidence that you know we can race well. And now, obviously, the time means nothing. It's now where we finish on the track, so I'm looking forward to that part of it now for the rest of the day. Go as hard as I can, and you know we're not there to make friends. For cars in the first race, the scores are promising, as this team always builds speed over the course of an event. Now, it's all about finishing top three to advance to the final. First ARX event. First round of the year. First semi-final. The pressure is now on to make it to the first final of the year. All the effort in the long days the team have put in have brought them to this moment. After the anxious wait on the pre-grid, Sandell and Atkinson take to the start line. From the second row, they need a great start to move up. The lights go green. Into turn one, Sandell's inside position helps him. Akko is stuck on the outside, unable to make ground. They finish third and fourth, leaving Atkinson on the sidelines for the final. Sandell is holding you out of the final right now. That's where we're at right now. Next, Higgins in the number 75 Subaru. Higgins found his rhythm by the end of qualifying. Now he needs to continue that progression. the line, he fights off a challenger to slot into third, then takes the joker early to hold his position. Everything we've got now on the way, everything we've got now, hold your line, hold your line inside, he's on your inside, hold your line inside, force him wide. Car lengths behind, last lap, last lap, everything we've got now, everything we've got. He hangs on to third to advance. While the cars in Silverstone push their way into the final, the rally program pushes to keep up with the calendar back in Vermont. 
After a marathon five-day drive back from Seattle, the team is left with just two days of reprep before the cars depart for Pennsylvania. Chris Atkinson and David Higgins will meet with us in Pennsylvania Wednesday night, so it's a really quick turnaround for them as well as us with the cars. That gives us roughly three and a half days to completely turn the cars around, including a livery change because Patrick Sandell ran one of the cars at Olympus and now Chris Atkinson's going to be running the car at STPR, so the car is going to get changed from yellow to blue, so that adds a whole other level of uh, stress and, and workload to get the car ready for uh, the next event. While neither car suffered major damage out west, every inch and every bolt must be inspected. So when the cars get back to the shop, we basically uh, pull them out of the trailer and completely blown apart right to the shell. Uh, we generally leave uh, most of the electronic in the chassis and the, the seats and harnesses and things, but the transmission, rear diff, all the suspension components come out of the car and get cleaned and checked or replaced. With so much effort put into the development of the program, Anything less than a 100% ready rally car is unacceptable. Uh, sometimes we get in these situations where we need to turn the cars around very quickly. Um, it doesn't happen very often, and obviously a little bit more sleep would be nice, but we make the best of it we can, and uh, it's just all part of the sport. Reprep must be complete by Tuesday night. Cars packed in the trailer in the morning. and the journey to Susquehannock Trail Performance Rally begins. By Wednesday evening, the cars will meet with two travel-weary drivers straight from England. Back in England, the six cars that have qualified for the final don't return to the paddock. Yeah, yeah, you know, we are in the final. If we can have a good launch now in the final and a bit of luck in the first few corners because there's not many places to pass, we should be in the mix because we are in the mix now on the lap times. So, um, you know, just give it all we have. You know what position you need to get into the final now once we're in it, we'll just see what happens. So it's elbows out and get going. So the car's feeling better and better each run. Um, make a few little changes now and see where we are. New tyres on left side, please. For the two Subarus, there is mere minutes between races and the crew scrambles to check the car. Fresh tyres, check engine maps, check for damage, and go. That's all the time they have. Before they know it, the cars are called to the grid. All the build-up this weekend no longer matters. It's all decided over the next three and a half minutes. The cars load up on the handbrake. Full revs and stop. Full stop, my dad, full stop. I think it might be me. Okay. A false start is assessed to the blue Subaru. You'll need to take the longer Joker twice. The cars are reset and the pressure builds again. This time it's a clean start. Both Subarus are tentative on launch. Another false start was simply too risky. At the front, Sandell is in hot pursuit and then it all gets mixed up. With Sandell now down in the mix, he jokers early to get as much free track as possible. Right, now Patrick. They call fast lap. Higgins is in front of one of the VWs. Being in his way helps his teammate, but a slow flat reveals itself at the worst moment. He spins, restarts, but his race is over. We're done, guys. Something broke. Back with Sandell, he's pushing hard and is right on the tail of third. He has a shot at a podium and is pressuring the car ahead. Go, 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 go. He's in front of you. Keep digging, keep digging. Now, that's the third place. That's the third place. You know what you're going to do. Find the spot, find the spot. But the tight track leaves him little room to pass. In the end, he will have to settle for fourth. I know we all wanted more, but 
but uh, this is what we got and we have to be happy with the point. We are in the championship now fight with the BWs and I'm sure we're gonna beat them. Thanks guys. So close to a podium. So close to the result the team had aspired to. First corner was right, second corner uh, I got spun out, so full 360. I was in low speed, so it was not so dramatic, but I was last in the field and then had to fight back and almost made it back to third. Ended up fourth, so we got some, some decent points from the championship, which is good, but the fourth uh, is not as good as the third. A hard-fought fourth place would have been satisfying to the team a year ago, but for the moment, the team can't help but feel disappointed. Yeah, it was a pretty uh, difficult weekend. We learned an awful lot here. Uh, we arrived with a new format, a new track, a new year, and uh, it was a challenge, serious challenge. Rallycross is a sport where raw speed is only one factor in your success. It's a sport where a split-second decision can take what looked like a promising result down a peg. We came away at the end of the weekend with lap times that were able to match the quickest cars out there in our class, and that was good for us. So uh, without some incidents, we would have came away with a podium. So we we're one spot off, but it's, uh, for us, it's not good enough. The timesheets show that these American cars are just as quick as the world cars. Perspective will remind the team that they came to England with three brand new cars, and three cars finished. They survived a roll and a long weekend of punishment and came out with two cars in the final. Perspective will provide them the building blocks to take to Texas when the ARX reunites for the second round in a month's time. Next time on Launch Control. Subaru Rally Team USA completes its third event in as many weeks when Chris Atkinson joins David Higgins for the second time this season on American Stage Rally Roads. Higgins and Drew look to hold off their teammates once again and regain the championship lead. That's next time on Launch Control.